Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hi, and welcome to the Marketing Essentials Podcast. Our unique team helps small businesses grow by providing essential marketing expertise. Hello, and welcome to the Marketing Essentials Podcast. My name is Bill Parmentier of W. Parmentier Photography. I'm Justin of Justin Kerr Design. And I'm Alicia Piazza with The Spark Social. And together we make up the Marketing Marketing Essentials Essentials team. team. And we have a special guest with us today, Michelle Girasoli of The Fresh Rebellion. She's also a constant contact. Uh, we want to mess this up. Got Solutions us, partner. Solutions partner. See, I, I, we, we practiced this ahead of time and I still <laughs> messed it up. I knew I was going to, but that's okay. Yeah. So today we wanted to talk a little bit about email marketing and the importance of it. But before we do that, I want to just give you a second to just kind of talk a little bit about what you do. Sure. Thank you. Thanks mm-hmm. for having me today. I I love this topic. I've loved email marketing for 16, 17 years now. I became a a constant contact solution partner back in 2003, which was a long, long time ago after, you know, having worked in corporate. My daughter's 16, so it's always my measure. I know when I left corporate and started (laughs) out on my own. Um, And I had had one of those kind of career limiting moments in corporate where you hit send in an Outlook email and you realize that your whole list is public and you're like, yeah, I need to start using a tool. So (laughs) Constant Contact and I became good friends and uh, it's been a nice partnership ever since. Um, Right now I'm focusing on my own brand, The Fresh Rebellion, um, which is food. It's, uh, my niche has been uh, food and quality food, local food, um, organic food. So um, I'm promoting some great product lines um, mm-hmm. through that right now. So I'm um, glad to be here with you and kind of diving deep on, an, on a fun topic for me. Yeah, it's definitely something that we haven't really talked too much on up till this point. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's start off with like a 10,000 foot view of what email marketing is and why it's important. Well, it's part of your marketing mix. There are so many ways that you can get the word out about what it is you do and how you do it and how you're different. And it's um, very overwhelming sometimes, um, especially for a small business, a solopreneur who's trying to figure out how to start a business. You need to look at all of your options. And a lot of times you don't have a large budget for print sure. or for advertising, or you don't really know what to do with social. You haven't found your voice yet. So it's a good kind of safe place to, to start and practice. I think, uh, you know, there's, there's many ways that email marketing can help um, get your, get the word out about your business. Um, you know, it can establish your credibility as an expert, um, and let you kind of educate your your list over time as to why you do what you do and why you do it, how you do it. So it's building building your brand is one one great reason to use it. And then, you know, kind of delivering that urgent, timely news. It's, it gives you a um, a place to push out news on a timely manner. So the inbox is crowded. It's been it's a lot more crowded now than it, when it was you know 15 years ago. So you've got to kind of find your way through it. But it's really the best way, I think, to, to nurture an audience over time. They'll always know where to find you in their inbox. Sure. Very true. When you're meeting with somebody the first time talking about email marketing, considering that they probably know very little about, bit about it, what, what is your suggestion to get started as far as, you know, somebody brand new at it, never done email marketing at all? Yeah, I've taught scores of score workshops on this very topic and it can go in so many different directions but i wanted to oh, leave I gotta, I gotta stop you just so in case anybody doesn't know what score is oh, right right uh well the acronym changed but it's a, a great group of um, volunteer business professionals that dedicate their time to teaching workshops all over the state in conjunction with the the chambers and the libraries um and one of your previous podcasters bob salvis uh, bob organizes salvis. them for score rhode island and he did he pay you to mention his name <laughs> on this podcast well, I'm going to pay him to get in this podcast in his newsletter. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. wash each other's back, right? I think we'll twist his arm to get him to do that. Yeah. So, yeah, Bob Bob is kind of a rock star in the constant contact world because he's he's always uh, delivered so much valuable training. Sure. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I wanted to leave uh, you guys with, like, five things to think about when you're starting out in email marketing. Um, the first is kind of the most obvious, but it's that kind of 
heart sinking moment when I talk to most people like how's your list your email list who Coach. are you emailing to and everybody's <laughs> like oh like the database right yeah and there's a real tendency to wait until you have a list of substantial size before you start and we always say if you start with five names like just start get into the practice you're probably not going to get it right the first time anyway so um, you know start with the friends and family list and then work at growing that over time and don't stress about buying a list. It's not the right practice anyway. Sure. The second is the technology. As I said, I just, uh, you know, back before I really um, started using the different platforms, it, there's a uh, kind of a, a shortcut of trying to use your Gmail account or your mm-hmm. Outlook account. And it's, it's one of those things you just don't want to do. There's so many benefits to using technology like Constant Contact, MailChimp, there's proprietary solutions. You know, you use it for the service to to make sure that your email is landing in the inbox, um, and and also to take advantage of things like the unsubscribe functionality. Oh, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. you don't want to be managing your own list. It's it's hard enough to get them in there if they don't want to be in there anymore. You you want to let them unsubscribe on their own. Yeah, and, and yeah. those rules have changed recently with, with the GDC, right? Uh, yeah. GDPR, I think. Is, well, G- is that right? Do I have GDPR. Yeah. I, I said GDC. I don't and know. And there's also CAN spam <laughs> compliance as yeah. well, yeah. which was been around before GDPR. Yeah. All they, these. I, yeah, I got lost in the acronyms. Really there. long <laughs> acronyms. Yeah, yeah, don't even ask me what yeah, CAN spam b- stands for. Basically, anymore. just I don't uh, <laughs> different laws in different countries that regulate right. spam. Basically. How you can send out emails, mm-hmm. you know, marketing emails. Right. For example, you're supposed to always have your mailing list, your physical mailing address at the end of your email. That's one of those things like the the services just make sure and do that for you. You don't forget and then you don't get in trouble. There's no can spam police. There's no (laughs) really (laughs) regular. on your door. Yeah. You know, really it's like people, there's a department at Constant Contact that's keeping an eye on their customers and making sure they're doing best practices. So we, we can learn a lot from the, that. The Canadian Mountie's not going to show up. <laughs> <anymore and laughs> yes. You're on the wrong thing, eh? <laughs> yeah. Some days we wish there were when you see your inbox. Well, but. that makes me curious as far as uh, one end of email marketing, uh, how are you getting on, getting on a list? Now, in the past, I've, I've come across people that I just talked to them once, they got my email address, all of a sudden I'm on their email list mm-hmm. versus asking to, to opt into the list. Yeah, that's the best practice is permission-based. Um, I think that's one of the the biggest horror stories of, of my you know customer set. They promised me that they had this database and we set up an account for them and it turns out they had permission to use a, a conference's email attendee list. Oh. Well, that business is not didn't give them permission to to um, oh, market, ouch. so they get their account shut down after all that work of getting it set up. So always ask if mm-hmm. you know if if you get somebody's card. You know, it's kind of like a game. Sure. Can can I use this? Um, can I use your email if I meet you at a networking event? Can I use your email if I join a BNI group with you and or a chamber? Can I go on the chamber's website and take everybody? No, the best is to say, hey, to I have, ask, I have yeah. a newsletter. Do you mind if I put you on it? I'm, I always respect someone who asks me that. When yeah. in doubt, ask. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. and why, I mean, you should want to ask because if you don't, they're just going to end up, you know, either a little, can I say pissed off on the podcast? I don't know. They're going to maybe did. end up angry. You just, you just did, so yeah. I can always bleep I it did. out later. So, there you go, Bill. There's some bleeping. Hey, I haven't, had, I haven't had to do a bleep yet for this podcast. So. <laughs> really? <laughs> Keep it clean. <laughs> and then they're they're probably going to unsubscribe, so what was the point anyway? Right. Yeah. Right. So. And you want to use your subscriber list uh, to kind of cross-pollinate your other marketing efforts. So you'll have the sub- sign-up button on your website and you're driving traffic from Facebook to your website and that's a way for them to keep in touch with you. It's, it's always joyful when people opt into your list. Sure. Or if you have an event, um, or if actually the, the base rule is if you've ever done a transaction with them, uh, you know, if they paid you to do something, you don't need to ask. That is permission and you won't really? get in trouble. Mm-hmm. I did not know that. I learned yes. something new. Yep. Oh, good. Of, my lot, job lot, here is done. A lot of people are going to be ending up on my email list now. now. <laughs> If yeah, you're but, doing, yeah. I don't want to get like too far into the legalities, but a quick mm-hmm. question is like, if you are doing like an event or where you're collecting emails at mass, should you be asking every single person at the event, or do you put like a disclaimer if they're doing like signups or something like yeah, that? Yeah, usually there's a checkbox if they don't want, they can opt out at that point. But it's you know they're attending your event, you're exchanging value with them. It's it's you know almost they can implied at that point. To be on the list, yeah, yeah, yep. 
It's a good question, though. Okay. Um, so a couple of other quick things is the frequency, you know, if, if you're mm, looking at, like, how often do you want to send it out? I think um, at the beginning there was this kind of a general, oh, as long as you've got something out there quarterly, you'll be stay top of mind, and that is not true. We are just so bombarded <laughs> with info. So, um, you know, if you have a newsletter, like traditional old school newsletter with articles that leads them back to your blog and you're, you're doing a significant amount of writing, um, you, you know, monthly is tops. You don't want to be doing that that weekly. To stay top of mind with quick bits of news or a, a sure. video, um, you know, you're doing the podcast weekly. That's a great just link over, quick picture and a link over. Um, you're not so asking to be... too much of them to, to to read, read, read. So it yep. doesn't have to be elaborate. It, it can be right. a very simple email. Beautiful just to... picture that you've taken that you want to share with people. Yeah. I think we're on track. I think we're doing a good job. I'll have to share one of our emails with you if you're not on our email list, but I will ask you. Can I don't think I am, am but list? now please put me on your list. <laughs> we have a beautiful image from our um, graphic design department on my right. Yeah. <laughs> we do just well, we a... Have a par- department now. <laughs> yeah, this is the department over here. And then we just keep it really simple. And it's just yeah. like, a, hey, if you're interested, it and and we've been working on growing our list organically and it takes time yeah, yeah. but it, the it frequency does. that's a, that's a really important point yeah well, one day you'll wake up and you'll look at your list and it's massive because you've networked and you've you know you've got your, your name out there and it's like you're getting um kind of more reward for the work that you're doing it's a lot of work to put content sure. together in various ways visual um audio you're doing the facebook live challenge the videos can be reasons to go out to your list um and I think that's, uh, you know, as long as you're changing it up and you're not doing the same thing, if it's ex- expected, oh, here comes another three-page, uh, you know, article that I have to spend my time reading from my smartphone, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're asking a lot of your audience. So just keeping in mind, like, what am I asking them to do? If it's, you know, clicking and watching a video, videos are the number one mm-hmm. click-through rate driver. So yes. if mm-hmm. you're doing that or, or an audio podcast, you're driving and you can't, can't watch it on the phone, but you can listen, you're going to see your engagement go up. So, so nice. less text, more audio and video. Yes. And the last thing is the um, analytics, the measurement. Like it's such a great tool for knowing how your audience is engaging with your content and with you, what you have to say or what you have to offer. So definitely taking advantage of things like the open rate, the click-through rate, um, and I can talk about that in a little bit. But um, yeah, those are the really the, at a high level, those are the things that let you use email to differentiate yourself versus, um, you know, print mail, advertising, that you don't always have that uh, that engagement with your with your people. Sure. Yeah. Okay, the so analytics not, are, sorry. Oh, okay. Analytics are, I'm always a fan of analytics. And mm-hmm. like, I, I look at ours. I do, even though I don't share them with you guys every time. But every email you send out, you can see. And, you know, every, you can tell yeah. if people were more interested if one subject line worked better than another or yeah. if, uh, I mean, we send ours at the same time every week because the podcast goes out at the same time, but we could experiment with changing the time up and seeing mm-hmm. if the click-through rates and stuff like that differ. Yeah. So yeah. as many answers as it gives you, it's endless questions. Like, should I try this or try that? Well, we the did, analytic ra- rabbit hole. I think yeah. the last time we looked at some analytics, we noticed that the podcast was getting the most listens to on, Wednesdays. In, on Wednesdays, middle of the week. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so... And we thought about it. It's like, well, that kind of makes sense because Monday, Tuesday, you're just like getting back from the weekend, trying to get stuff done. Middle of the week, you're starting to look for diversions, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. or you've, you've, your plus, schedule or is free up a little bit. you or, could say. Yeah. Yeah. Inspiration. Well, plus we, we <laughs> dropped the podcast. On Facebook, of course. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, plus we also dropped the podcast on Wednesday, too, so that... Well, that is a big thing to do with yeah. it. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, that either can be one or two things. People are listening to it on the very day that it drops, or they're... They're having subscribed on their, you know, through iTunes or Google Play, and they, Wednesdays just happen to be the day. That well, they I have listen. a, I have an idea. Let's ask the email expert. Is there a good day of the week? <laughs> <laughs> I get asked this question too for social media, like when should I post? And it it varies, but yeah. I don't know. Do you find an email? Marketing? Yeah, there's no solid answer. I think it depends on the type of business you're in. For okay. example, um, we had a realtor who was sending out their emails Monday. Got to the office, got organized after the weekend, sent it on Monday. Email. But by Friday, that's when people are, you know, starting to do their open houses and uh, they just by shifting the time of when it was done based on when their audience was engaged, like they needed to do Monday to set up all the activities so that they could do the open houses. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But when they were sending it out to realtors, the realtors were you know, in full-on follow-up mode on Monday themselves, and they never got responses from that segment of their list. So it's really just experimenting over time. Mornings tend to be higher, and then late in the day versus the mid midday. Oh. Um, so mornings are, you know, you come in, you're getting organized, you're seeing what came in overnight, uh-huh. um, and then afternoons, you're trying to wrap up the day. Um, you know, linking over to something that's going to require 10, 20, 30 minutes of a focused attention, that might be a different, you know, you might see that more popular in the afternoon because they, they can click on it and hit it on their drive home. True. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, yeah, play around with it. And, and you can always resend, especially you can track who's opened and who hasn't opened. Um, mm-hmm. And then you can resend it on a Saturday morning and see if people listen to the podcast over coffee. You never Interesting. know. You know, try it. Mm. Who's taking notes here, guys? We're getting uh, <laughs> all this good <laughs> consultation. I feel like we should be paying you. <laughs> no, I this pizza in the corner. I'll grab a pizza. <laughs> oh, okay, right. So now you get somebody set up on that email list. I shouldn't say on the list, but set up on email marketing. Mm-hmm. So what's your next suggestion as far as who to target, how to target them? What's the what's the a good best practice to start? Yeah, I think email marketing gives you the opportunity to segment out your list um, and and you know, all right. There's there's so many different ways I can answer this. The first sure. is permission based. Don't market to anyone. We've already covered that. Don't mm-hmm. market to someone you don't have permission. Second is think about the natural breaks in the business that you do and who you're trying to reach out to. I like to think of um, a persona like this is my client, someone who you know, in the nutrition business, wants to feel better, wants to lose weight, wants to sleep better. And then I write specifically for that person. Mm -hmm. Um, So there's also, once you get going and get really kind of sophisticated with it, you can segment your list based on active clickers, people who actively click on your content. You can send them something a little more engaging than someone who might just want to see a picture and get reminded that you're there. So there's ways that you can segment out your list to say, all right, these are the people who have been actively engaged. I'm going to send them something twice a week or, you know, you know, at a little higher frequency or a little better offer even. Yeah. Uh, That that would make sense. Like maybe a coupon for like being a a valued customer or something like that would be a great for somebody that you know is already looking. Yeah. Yeah. Super user. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, the, the pressure is to get the numbers. You want to get your word out there to so many people. And, Mm -hmm. and the more you can kind of control yourself and, and rein that in and say, you know what, let me just do some, some more, you know, higher frequency messaging with the more active group and see how that goes. You know, Mm -hmm. I think, you know, the, the worst thing you can do who not to target is, as we said, if, if you have, uh, bought into a list. And I'll give the example of um, a magazine, for example. Magazines have lists of, or, or newspaper has a list. If they ever say, we'll sell you our list, always say no. If they allow you to market through their platform as an advertiser, then great. You're getting access to their whole list, sure. but you're not violating any rules. Uh, yeah. So, quick side note, you used to work for some company that was a newspaper. <laughs> and we had this program that as account reps, we were supposed to sell and it was literally selling to people who had bought, who they bought these lists, and it, it, I never sold it. Yeah. So basically, there's never I, a good, good time to, to buy a list. There's never. Yeah, really. Get exactly. them naturally, organically, um, like build that relationship and keep them on your email list. Yeah. yeah, it would make sense that you would want somebody that wants to, to, to look at your product or your service as opposed to just kind of spraying out there and going, maybe yeah. you'll like it. You know, I don't like, know. Well, maybe the yeah. buying of the lists kind of preys on the fears of like, I need to get started and I need to get started quickly. And you yes. had said before, it's like, just start with five right. and build it organically over time. And I think the advantage of that is that you're, the people that you're adding, you know, are interested in what you're marketing mm-hmm. and it has some value to them versus mm-hmm. you buy a list of a thousand names and you don't know these people. I mean, you haven't had any contact with them. You don't know if they're interested in what you're marketing. It's right. just they don't even a know list who you are at, at most of the time. Right. right. They've never had a touch point with your brand, and it's like, why? Why is this in my inbox? Like, I don't <laughs> yeah. want this. Yeah. So well, it's invasive. I yeah. like the other thing you said as far as make your mistakes early. If you're making it in front of five or six people or ten people that's on your marketing list. And one of them is your mom. Yeah. You know, it's like you're always forgiving. She's always forgiving. I mean, I think back to our first podcast. I'm kind of glad when our first couple of podcasts, there were only a couple people listening because 
<laughs> they were, we were still rough. learning. They were we were still rough. learning. No, well, I mean, it's like anything else. You, you learn as you we're go. We're smooth you as do. jazz now, though. You guys are cooking with gas. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. Just watch out for the explosion. <laughs> <laughs> it's another story itself. But so anyway. you were taking us through the five things that you yes. wanted us to know. So where are we now? I lost track. <laughs> yes. No, Sorry. I think we ended with <laughs> metrics. And I think um, one of the things that always came up in the workshops was what's the right open rate? What's the target mm. for my click-through rate? What are my metrics? And I, I want to point everybody to a resource that if you Google constant contact industry rates, um, I, I did it this morning, and there's actually December of 2018. They release stats. They have millions and millions of emails coming through. And they, and they release through. those freely? Wow. Yeah, they pub- publish them regularly on their blog. So, wow. um, you know, you want to look at open rate, and it actually differentiates your open rate on a mobile device or a desktop, the oh. desktop click through and open rates are always higher for some reason. You're sitting there; it's easier to see, yeah. and and the, the you know the phone. It's hard to read email on your phone. You really have to be dedicated. Especially when to... you need glasses like me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do. There's so little the font. So um, yeah. So a better chance of uh, and we all design everything for mobile, right, Justin? Sure. You're always conscious of what device. Right. Right. But we you know there's limitations to it. Like you said, you're not going to do long form reading. No. So you have to make sure that your content is built for mobile. Yep. Like mm-hmm. you said, a video is great because people will click through and they'll watch a little video on yeah. their phone, but they're not going to read a six-page article on their phone. Right. No. And big buttons with simple words and colors, you know, it's yeah, like you're Push trying. here. Yeah. <laughs> big, bright colors. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, I mean, that's the magic of it. You can't yeah. have this little tiny text link that you can't read. You, you really need to, to work hard for it. So well, work hard for f- that action. On my phone, I find myself going, why isn't it working? Because you keep hitting yeah. it. Yeah. You can't get it open. So. Yeah. Um, and then also um, unsubscribe rates. Always you want to have a, a, under 1%. If, if, in fact, you get in trouble if it's over 1%. A red flag pops up at the, uh, at the auditor's department, and they, they take a look <laughs> at that account, and they, you can really? get shut down. Yeah, you really want to make wow. sure you're, you're really low. So you don't want people now, unsubscribing there, early then. There right? must be a threshold, because if you've got 100 people on your list and somebody unsubscribes, you're already at that threshold. Yeah, very true. Very yeah. true. I think uh, what they see is someone uploading a thousand names, ten thousand names, and then you've got a one percent. Then you're not going to be using that account. Sure. <laughs> At be, that point, something you're red a flag. repeat yeah. offender. <laughs> yes. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> something. So yes. they may have gotten banned for life from. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Is that bad? Um, yeah, it hurts. It hurts. We've, I, I've done my my best to mitigate it. It's like, well, you told me you had permission, and they just didn't understand what permission was. They had permission, like I said, from a conference or from um, a, a list by service, and they're like, yeah, I bought this. I had permission to use it. I'm like, you didn't have the email the opt-in. users yeah. opt-in, right? Oof. I think there's a lot of mystery behind that because people mm-hmm. don't know, well, what is a good email? What is a bad email? Yeah. You know, up until today, I didn't really know exactly, yeah. you know, what permissions were good versus what were bad. So, yeah. Well, if you work with a professional, exactly. we'll let you know. That's, and now anybody that's listened to this podcast now knows they can't get away with it. <laughs> it's a testament to just good good marketing pays off because yeah. Google can shut your shut you down. They can blacklist you for oh, yeah. um, mm-hmm. shady SEO tactics. Facebook mm-hmm. can shut your ad account down. Um, these companies want to protect their their reputation and sure. they want to serve up great content and a good experience for their users. So yeah. they're looking out for the people, mm-hmm. I think, most yeah. of the time. Ag- agreed, <laughs> Hopefully. agreed. Um, and then I think the, the other thing is that um, it varies based on your industry. And this, this report, the industry rates report, can, you know, on average, a great open rate is 16%. We're always shooting for 25, yeah. 30%, but on average. But if you're in... Um, education, you're going to see an average of 24%. It's kids' schools, the parents are opening it to keep So it really on depends on, on the actual type of business or type of yeah. email. Yeah. Well, it's just a peace of mind to give yourself a benchmark. If you go in and you think that you're doing great, and then, you know, or you think you're not doing great and you, you should be having more, it gives you peace of mind to go in and say, okay, I'm, I'm in the range, you know, I'm in wow. the range. Um, so, yeah, all kinds of data. Really, that's that's the beauty um, and and segmented data. It's uh, they've really done a great job of collecting and then using that and being able to teach how to up your game. Um, so I've enjoyed the partnership with them over the years. No. There are other technologies. Were you going to say something? I was going to ask a question, but I thought I was waiting for a pause. <laughs> <laughs> Deep breath. Deep breath. Deep breath. <laughs> well, you had mentioned before about you know the inbox is crowded and it's very difficult to stand out. So. Obviously, one of the first things that somebody sees in their inbox subject is line. the subject line. So do you have yes. any sort of rules of thumb, guidelines for 
those subject lines? Yes. Do not put uh, March 2019 newsletter. <laughs> That's, topic. That's the first thing. If you're doing that, just scrap it. Just start over. Well, those are the first now. ones to get deleted in my unsubscribe. Yeah. If I even open it to you, I basically open it to unsubscribe because it doesn't draw you in. Yeah, it's the same thing. You'll be able to find it easily in the inbox when you sort your email, but who does that, that right? <laughs> it seems lazy. Like, be a mm-hmm. little creative. Let your brand voice come through. Right, right. So Which Makes me glad I'm not doing a newsletter. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great question, though, because because that is the key driver of the open rate is the subject line. If you read it, you know who it's from, right? If, and if you see that, you're like, oh, I can check in on that later. You never get back to it. So it's like you open it now, you open it today, or you never open it if it's you know in the sea of mm. your inbox. One of the things that we've kind of noticed is the clickbait, the five mm. reasons to, the top three things that, or something, what's it called? Uh, alliteration? Like, mm, March Madness market sale, or, you know, it's like kind of catching their attention. Mm -hmm. Um, So if you are are kind of scrambling to to put, don't do the subject line first. That's the first thing that you see when when your screen comes up. Do it at the end, once you know what the thing is going to be about. Yeah, that makes sense. Sometimes Mm -hmm. we come up with the podcast titles after we've listened to the podcast because Mm -hmm. you have more content and an idea. Sometimes it goes in a a slightly different direction than we originally planned on when we started. That has happened. Yeah, Yeah, we do go off on a tangent at times. Never. (laughs) (laughs) I think... Like when we've done our own research on subject lines, a lot of the ones that seem to get traction are how to yep. or five steps to, you know, because people like yeah, you guys do a great job with those that. kind of, you know, oh, I can learn something here mm-hmm. or three easy steps to yep. um, those. or deadline soon. That's the other, you know, deadline today because uh, you have to take action or you, you yeah. miss it. So, yeah. but you need to use that sparingly. Now, that is, I was going to say, because, mm-hmm. uh, there's one specific email that I get on a regular basis, and it's always last day for, for this percentage off. And then I'll get one three days later, last day for the same exact percentage <laughs> off. I'm like, well, wait a minute. Yeah. It's like those People stores are, in New York that yeah. have been going out of business for 10 years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or, or, you know, so it, I think it loses its effectiveness if you do it too often, like you said. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. You know, it's a service when you have a registration deadline for an event. You've seen the thing on Facebook for months or weeks, and you, you know it. You know you're going to it, but you haven't got your name. And you get that email, you can click easily. It's like, oh, thank you for sending that. You know, yeah. I didn't want to miss it. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But if you use it too often, yeah, it gets gets old. Yeah. I wonder if that, I wonder if that would ju- uh, jump the uh, unsubscribe rate when you start doing stuff like that. Oh, yeah. It comes across as not genuine anymore because, yeah. y- you know, your users are going to see through like it's just a, a ploy. To yeah. Get, to get, yeah. you know. Yeah. I think if you, and this might be a duh comment on my part, but if you, if you approach your marketing from the point of view of you're building relationships yeah. instead of you're selling something to somebody, I think a lot of the things we've been talking about will come as second nature because sure. if, you're, you know, if you're trying to develop a relationship with somebody in real time, there are certain things you don't do, right? You know, etiquette and mm-hmm. good manners and, you know, just sort of relational uh, common sense. But if you're in the mindset of, I need to sell this product or service, you may end up violating a lot of those things that we end up talking about. Right. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's hiding behind technology, right? If you wouldn't say it to someone's face, Registration deadline today when it's not today. You you know, <laughs> Why are where's you that authenticity? Why is it all caps. <laughs> oh yeah, no exclamation points in the subject line. <laughs> oh no, I'm such an I I may have used excellent. I'm I need to like I'm one of those people who when I write like my personal email I need to go back and like eliminate some exclamation marks. I'm just very excited. You're you know? enthusiastic, <laughs> but it makes sense if in the subject line you don't want to come across as too like yelling. Uh, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, we did that once for a theater who is um, who questioned our tactics of using all caps in the subject line, and they're like, "Doesn't that isn't that yelling?" I'm like, "You have three tickets sold, and the show is you Saturday. Need you need this is a case where you need to get their attention." We literally go yell on the streets right no. now. Yeah. <laughs> also, one of the things that I really, when you see these subject lines, is when you see a subject line that makes no sense with what you open up. When you open it up, it's like. Sale today, and you open it up, and there's nothing about a sale. Yeah. I mean, that's probably the wrong way to say yeah. it. But. Or I'm a Nigerian prince. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I love, that's my favorite. Deposit you you had to go there, didn't you? <laughs> I I feel like I got an email that was so when I think clickbait, like I think like, um, it's almost like misleading. Like I had an email that's like the three things you need to know about niching for your marketing agency, and then I opened it up, that's and the guy was just stuff. trying to get me into his yeah. uh, 
his mastermind group for a thousand dollars a month. And I'm like, what, what is this? You know, yeah, I wanted mm-hmm. to learn. I wanted mm-hmm. to learn. I'm not ready to, who are you? People are quick <laughs> to catch on to the, the bait and switch. And, that, and I think that's what I was that's trying to get at. Bait is and the, bait, the old yeah. bait and switch. It's like, they give you a subject line. Like, oh, this might be an interesting article. And like you said, you get sold to. It's like, wait a minute, I didn't open it for that reason. Yeah. One of my favorite subject line masters, he's a master of this craft, is Rich Austin. Mm, he does rich. a newsletter for networkers. Yeah. And he's we listing of all them. of these events that are coming up. And he'll pick like tequila, roadhouse, you know, <laughs> yeah. all these like, things. Like, 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 how yeah. do these three things go together? You I, have I to always click open his out. email. Yeah, 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 yeah his yeah. open rate is pretty yeah. good. <laughs> and then the last thing is video. If you have a video... Put video in the subject line because people, oh, I'll watch that video. I like that. Yeah, so don't Fills don't hide it under the... If it has the word cat in front of video, I always open it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I... Cats, babies, I want you, and food. Yeah. So when I want you to open one of my emails, I'm just going to write... Just put cat, cat video in it. I'm good to go. It, yeah. okay. Or squirrel, right? Squirrel. <laughs> froyo, froyo, froyo videos. <laughs> How do you feel about emojis in the subject line? Um, I think they stand out. Okay. I think as long as they're respectful and not overdone, it's something you don't see and it stand out. It's almost like seeing your name in the subject line when someone's... So don't put 32 emojis, just... No. Yeah. <laughs> One emoji, yes. The exclamation point Oh, so you've got emails from my mother before then. <laughs> I have, actually. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. We're, I just totally I'm lost sorry, train Mom, of thought. Thank you. Award, I, didn't I think think that your mom's you know, listening to this. You know that. Right? Going back to the email marketing, Michelle, what types of businesses can use email marketing? Oh, that's kind of like the softball Ooh. one, isn't it? Everybody, right? I think so. <laughs> I've seen so many um, over the years, that so many different kinds. I think nonprofits can do a great job with a few resources. I think they can really... Um, take email marketing to the, the next level for their business or their organization. I, I can't think of someone who can't use it, honestly. It's it's a medium that is, the technology is a low barrier to learning. There's great training, um, the low cost uh, to, to get started. So I can't think of a business that couldn't. If you have something to say, it's a way to say it. I agree. <laughs> okay, good. So. I was waiting for the curveball, like, what about? No, I don't she, have one. At least you if you're a spammer say, business, then don't do that. If you're Amish, maybe, it's not going to work for you. <laughs> you know, the whole technology thing. Yeah. Usually funeral homes fall into our can't market well category. <laughs> oh, no. Like You'd actually be surprised. Sale. You'd be uh-huh. surprised when the stuff that's going on in the funeral business right now. Yeah, they may actually, for email, I don't know, maybe. I yeah I don't, I don't know where to go with that one. I, mean, I could throw a few puns that no, way. No, please don't. Please <laughs> well, that's don't. That's a really good thought because they're marketing to you know they're just keeping their. Well, in that case, it's the content that matters, showing how they're supportive of the community, yes. Ooh, helping differentiate. Right, right. Like you really that. gotta get helping your people with a big life transition. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. since we brought that up, yeah. and I'm gonna try to get us back on okay. the track here. <laughs> what what have you found? In regards to email marketing, uh, particularly challenging, like a particular market or a particular type of service where you're like, ooh, this one was a really hard one to figure out how to email market properly, but we managed to do it. I think if someone has a business and they're not tech, like a gym, for example, they're not used to being at a computer because they're always in the gym. They might not have collected names. They might not have... Um, thought about how to post content or create content. So, you know, the, a, a good way to do that, again, is to put the old-fashioned sign-up list in the gym, the physical location, mm-hmm. and just start with the people you have and ask them to share. Maybe do a contest so that they can share emails and that can grow your list. And to use other people's content with credit. Mm-hmm. If you're not a writer, if you don't feel comfortable doing video, if, you don't, if you're not technology savvy, there are great um, resources that you use to educate yourself that you can share. I found this article to be helpful because dot, 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 link, and always credit the source. So everyone is um, always happy when you get a reference from sure, another sure. Um, another location. So yeah, I think if, if you're just not tech savvy, um, I've seen a lot of people transitioning out of um, a corporate job into a second career, and they struggle with it. Mm-hmm. Um, but they get to the workshops, and they figure it out, and, and they model best behavior. They're all, you know, you can watch people and how they do email and then use that to inspire you. Okay, well, I think we've hit on a lot of information, first and foremost. So, um, takeaway. Ooh. If, if <laughs> somebody's starting out from the very beginning, what would be the takeaway for them? as far as email marketing is concerned? Uh, 
<laughs> and that's a big question. It's right? a big question. <laughs> yeah. I, I think you want to observe first, have a plan, start with a goal, right? It's like, why are you doing it? Start with a goal. Um, so then you know if you've reached success. You can pick many different technologies, many different ways to talk to people, but get started is important because you don't want to be two or three years into your business and not have that list and have that big event coming and no one to market it to. So, sure. um, yeah, just do it. The Nike advice. <laughs> Just good. get started, right? I like it. That's good advice. Yeah. That's good advice. Thanks. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a blast talking to you, and I learned a few things. I'm sure you guys did too, right? Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, you yeah, guys are yes. so fun. Thanks oh, for having me. Thanks. So one chance for you to plug uh, yourself. If somebody wants to get in contact with you, learn a little bit more about what you do. Great. My website is freshrebellion.com. Um, I'm promoting nutrition. We have a great newsletter, obviously, <laughs> uh, yeah. for inspiration on how to feel better, look better. Um, like yeah. Come on by. Great. Terrific. We'll make sure to put that link in the show notes. Show notes too. Yes. Okay, great. Absolutely. Terrific. Thanks, guys. Well, I think that with that, that's all we have for the day. Yeah. Uh, Thanks so much for joining us, Michelle. Thank and you. Uh, until next time. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Thank you for joining us today. And as always, you can find the back episodes of our podcast on Apple Podcasts. And you can also find us on our YouTube channel. Both of them are the Marketing Essentials team. You can find us on the web at marketingessentialsteam.com. And if you subscribe through our website, you'll receive a weekly email and letting you know when each episode has been published. Also, you'll receive a link to subscriber-only content. You can also find us on Facebook, in our private Facebook group, just search Little Roadie Marketing Support Group. It's a great place for other marketing professionals and business owners where we can share marketing advice, challenges, and general trends. Hope to see you there.